It's a covet for our tzibur to be the venue for a covet achron for Mrs. Hildesheim. I personally did not enjoy a long history with Mrs. Hildesheim, but in the few years that I've been here, I've passed by her several times. It was impossible not to be struck by the way in which she carried herself with strength and with poise. She carried herself with dignity. <clears throat> and above all, there was a refined tzniyus, a modesty with which Mrs. Heldesheim carried herself. Pasik says, a yikra adam shem ishtoi chava, ki hi hoisa aim kolchai. Chava, after the chet, after a time of apparent limitation, Adam gave Chava Ishtoi, Chava, the name of Chava, because she was an Aim Kolchai. She would be the mother, the sustainer of Kolchai, of all life. I think as I flesh out my impression of Mrs. Hildesheim, I see in front of me an image of someone who, although she was faced with challenges, distinguished herself as an aim kol choy. She was a mother. She was a genesis of kol choy. She built, she nurtured a home of Ruchnius, a beautiful family. She supported a husband, children, grandchildren. Their framework of Ruchnius, Yamim Toivim, Shabbosis, Mitzvahs, Limit Atayra, Tznius. They were captured and contained within one person. The same way Adam saw in Chava one person, the ability to perpetuate and to be Makayim, the entire Bria. Within Mrs. Hildesheim, there was worlds. She inspired Talmidois. She had strong and deep relationships. <clears throat> As the Mepharshim say, while there were to be mothers that followed Chava. Nonetheless, Chava is noted as the Aim Kol Chai because she was the first. And the same way Mrs. Hildesheim was the first, but her inspiration and her legacy is left behind. She leaves behind her family, a community, Talmidois, that should perpetuate, that should be Makayim, that which she built for us.
and she should be a yesoid for all of us and for her children and tamidais to build on. She should be a melitz yoisha for all of us, for her family, and she should be a legacy and a yesoid for her chashiv of mishpach that she leaves behind. Hogabais must know Tamit to herself. Tomaki Tosakra, Lichu Lionero, Yudera Shucha Bakisho, Kapera Tomkuk Folk, Kapa Possil Oni, Yudera Shucha Lavion, Isir Pesa Misholek, to go Besa Lavashonim. Badam Osala, Shame Vagoma Lavusha, Nerda Shon Bala, the Shifter and Zipni Orts, Sodom Osa Vatimka, Hagar Nosal Knani. Oiz v'hadu l'vusha, v'atislik l'yoy m'achlein. Pi v'pasca v'chochma, s'aris chesed al shayna. S'afi ha'lichas b'eser, lecha matzad l'yseichel, chomu b'ner v'ashua, b'ayla, v'yhalo. Rav z'bon y'sechol, v'at alisa kolono. Sh'ek ha'chem v'hev al-yefi, ish ha'yir s'ayno hi t'salo. T'ulo pi v'adeo, v'halo v'shua m'atzer. We're all coming together today to give covered Achlan, Sarah Brindle, known as Shira, Basar Bavom, David, Ova Sholem. Shira was Zaycha, the five sons and one daughter, all you aim and shlam him, house of Torah and Chesed, laugh, call Adam Zaychalakach. Tarek Dasha says, begin this week's Pasha, Elo Taris Nayach, Nayach Ish Tzadik, Tom and Hoyev Daraisov. The Chadush of him says, the Minig Oilam, if they're going to Derech HaTayra, they must give themselves into Mechanach the children to grow up to Emesa Bin Eitayra. Says the Chadush of him, but, the Derech Emes is Adarabba. A person has to meshki himself. He himself has to go B'derech Hashem Maisim Toivim. If he wants his children to be Matzliach, the parents, the grandparents, they have to be the role model. And from that, the children learn from that. It says the Chedush Rim, that's Shat Naposik. Eva Tadus Noyach. What's the Tadus of Noyach? Because Noyach was Ish Tzadik. Shira was a wonderful role model for our community and especially for our family, for Edelkeit, for our Nova, for Tznias, for Pashtis. Her whole life was evolved in taking care of her husband and her family. And that's why she was Zecha to build such a beautiful family of Neitaya, of Neolia. And while passing on this holy Messiah to the next generation, even though she was sick for many years, 
She never complained and accepted her illness, thanked the Nubayan Shalom. Each day the Nubayan gave her. And Baruch Hashem, she was Zaycha. This last year, Nissan and Flies, she was able to bring her youngest child to the Chuppah. But it was even more than that. To get a Shira with your bottle Chaim of Liaza, so to it that the house should be our Mingish Mat, a mobile bottle for everyone in our community. The Zaya Kadesh asks, why did Noyach have to build a Teva? The Bansham Akol Yachal. The Bansham couldn't just make one place in the world that the Mabel shouldn't come there. Why do you have to build a Teva? 120 years building a Teva. He just should have made a place, an island, that no, that no, no water will come there and the rest of the world will die being flooded. That's one kasha, the Zayi Kodesh yes. The second kasha, the Zayi Kodesh yes. It says the Navi Yecheskel says that the Mabu is in the whole world except there at Yisrael. So the Bansham should have told Nayach, go to Eretz Yisrael. That you'll be Arya Mikva, that will save you. And the rest of the world will be destroyed. So why do you have to go build a Teva as the Zayi Kodesh? The Zayi Kodesh gives a mighty Gateret, he says. <coughs> when there's Ashkosa Ba'ilam, when the world is full of Tuma, you have to lock yourself up from the rest of the world. There shouldn't be Mashbi on you. That's why Noyach had to build a Teva, says the Zayi Kodesh. That's the only way that Noyach would have been saved, together with his family. Ebeliezer and Shira was there here in Chicago to build their own Teva to protect themselves and their children from all foreign influences that do come into houses, even houses of Bnei Teva. And that's why there was Zeicha to see such a wonderful Nachas from their children and their grandchildren. Shira, even when times were very hard for her, she allowed her husband, Rabbi Yezza, to keep his durham of learning every day. She was a true Ashes Chayel. She tried her best. Even when she was very sick, she tried her best not to burden her family. Mara Megillah says, I see them call Bata Knesia, it's a Bata Madrasha, she equal back to Israel. All future shows, based on Knesset and based on Medrash, will be conveying that to Israel. Why is it? Because the house is full of Kedusha. Based on Medrash, full of Kedusha. Based on Knesset, full of Kedusha. It will be conveying when Mashiach comes, it will be conveying that to Israel. Says the Naim al Melech. It's not only basic Knesset and basic, basic Medrash. Any house, Yiddish house, <coughs> that they live with Dusha Vitara, Koyme Chayam, they'll also be conveying that to Israel. And he says, it's even a Kava Choyma. If you're basic Knesset, you're there for a few hours. Basic Medrash, you're there for a few hours. A house is whole 24 hours, 24 7. It's a house that's brought up with Dusha and Tara. That certainly be conveying that to Israel when she comes. She was a curse of bias. And she saw that her house should be a Migdash Mi'at. She will be very much missed by the Chicago community, by her children, especially her dear husband, Rabbi Eza, who she was married to over 40 years. Elam Ovis Netzach, Mocha Shabdimok Al Koponim. She should be a Metsyasha for her husband, her children, Chicago community, and especially all the Chaylam in the city of Chicago.
come together, give a common achrein to this Isha Chashuva, Sora Brindel, Bas, Rebabram, David, Lea Shalom, the wife of our dear friend, Rabbi Yeza Hildesheim Sheikhia. Even though her name was Sora Brindel, she was called Shira. Her life was one long Shira, one long song to the Evishta. It was a life of the Rachel Dachai Noyam. She lit up with Simcha. <clears throat> Even during these past many years, <clears throat> she suffered Yisurim Noyroim because of her illness. She didn't lose her bitachin. She didn't lose her muna and her karib balchu. In Kehelis, the Pasuk says, Hoyleich el doroim, the soivev el tzafoin, soivev, soivev, hoyleich a ruach. V'yal svi voisov, shav a ruach. And the Chavot Chaim says, Pshad in the Pasuk, Hoyleich el doroim, Doraim the south represents Chachma, Torah. Like Chazal tell us, Yadrim. Someone who wants to daven for Chachma, he should, he should face towards the south. That's where the Menorah was. There was on the south. <clears throat> Someone who wants to daven for Ashirus should face towards the Tzofen, the north. That's where the Shulchan was. Dr. Chofetz Chaim. Hoylech el Doraim. Many people, Hoylech el Doraim, they walk towards this, the south. They want to have shifas for Torah, for Chachma. But then, Soyve vel Tzofen. But then they make a slight turn to the Tzofen, to the north. You need Panasa, a slight turn to the north. But very often, soy wave, soy wave. Very often, the person continues turning, turning more and more towards the north. And the Torah, the mitzvahs, become secondary. And before a person realizes, hoyla haruach, the neshama leaves is soivev, soivev, towards the tzafen and hoyla haruach. And then the neshama leaves, he leaves this world. But v'al tzvivaysav shavaruach, because of all his turning towards the north, <clears throat> he has to come back. He has to come back to this world. But Sora Brindel, together with Lahavra ben Chaim Lachaim, her husband, never forgot the Ika. They never forgot the Halicha El Doraim. It was a Soivev El Tzafain, a slight turn, Panasa, but it was not a Soivev Soivev. <coughs> it was not a Soivev Soivev. The focus, the Ika focus, was the was the halicha el doraim? Was the Torah? Was the Yerushalayim? <clears throat> Learning more, growing more in Torah and Avoida. <clears throat> and during the years, the past years, where she was Saivo, Yisurim Nairoim, she didn't lose her Muna. She continued her Avoida Sakhaydish. She continued to be Machanach Talmidois as long as she was able to. Her Anhoge was Anhoge Batsnei Aleches. She never complained. On the contrary, she kept on growing. She's Makabal, he is Surin Ba'ava with Simcha, Mitaich Amuna Tahira, knowing that Kol Mad Ovid Rachman Latav Ovid. She was one of those Sitkaniyos who was chosen by the Ebishter Kishayshana ben Achoychim. Like a rose among the thorns. 
to suffer for the tzibur. And they are the ones who are being the kari de gula. She was mukhene, she was ready to be makya for herself as an oila. As an oila kol, if that is the rotten of HaKadosh Baruch She was made on herself, ani choyma, on the wall. Strong like a wall in her face, in her moon and HaKadosh Baruch Beni Yoyna writes, in Yigeris HaTshuva, Ki ikas the chusr shal isha loyum haba, the ikas chus of a woman in the world to come, is kishiboneho ben oiseo oivdim es Hashem yizbarach. If she's oichet to have children, sons and daughters that serve the Eivishta, that's the ikka schus that a, that a woman has in oilam abba. Ukeshi v'bei sayilama, when she is in oilam abba, and her children, ubaneo yeish v'libam yira shemayim, and her children are yireim, a oiskim v'toyo v'mitzvahs, nechshav lo adova kilu hi v'chayim. It's as if she is still alive. Lois I call her mitzvahs. Vihi b'malois el yoinois boil mabo. And she is b'malois el yoinois. Very high up there in the world to come. If she leaves over children <coughs> who are oiskim b'toyer of a mitzvahs. Children that are yireim u'shleim. Yireim u'shleim. Yireim Sarah Brindle was zeicher to imachanach her children with derech at Torah of the year. The chesed and the tzedakah that she was oisik with, she was machanach her children, her sons, <coughs> daughter. She was to have she was for Torah, she was for tzedakah <coughs> for chesed. She was mashpia and all of her yoytei chalotzeho. The entire world now is <coughs> in a matzah of Amidas Hadin. In the city of Chicago, the last couple of weeks, we brought three kabbalas. Akash Baruch is talking to us. He wants us to return to him. He wants us to be mischazik in those things that this Nefteris stood for. To be mischazik, Torah, avoider. To be moisiv, more limerah Torah, to improve our tefillahs, to be misakan our dibur, to spend more time on those things that are important, and less time with those things that a hoylech el tzafoin. David should help. We should be in his chazik. <clears throat> we should be in his chazik in our avodas Hashem, and that will be the greatest chus for this nifteres. Obila Amovis von Netzach, Moch Hashem, Kim Dima, Mel Kopan. It's really um, very difficult for me to speak. <clears throat> I'd like to share a couple of thoughts. My wife was diagnosed 32 years ago with cancer. Rabbi Yishlam granted us, Baruch Hashem, <clears throat> two children during that period of time. She was pregnant with my son Menachem, and the Dayan, and Dr. Adler. We sat around the table discussing what to do. How do we deal with this? And they came up with a mahalach, and Baruch Hashem, my son Menachem was born. We gave him the name Menachem Yehuda. Apam Moedus Hashem, a tremendous bracha. And then we asked Dr. Adler, you think you should be able to have children again? He said, I don't know. And after five years, he said, yes, she's okay. She can have children. And the Bershom Bench was another son, Yosef Baruch. Gave me the name Yosef Baruch. It was a tremendous bracha. Tremendous bracha. We didn't think we'd have more children, and the Benjamin benched us. And we always said, we always said, what a bracha the Benjamin gave us. In the last few years, my wife became very sick. 
She had recurring disease. And I went to the Rosh Kailo. The Rosh Kailo gave me a chizik that carried me through to this day. I don't know if the Rosh, Kailo, the Rosh Kailo remembers, but I don't know if I remember it exactly. Rosh Kailo Reb David said to me, I came to Rosh Kailo shortly after his rabbis and his nifta. I said, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. Rosh Kailo said to me, told me a few things. But one thing he said to me, it says, I'm nice and shalak at summer. The Bani Shalom gives you enough. Nice and shalak at summer. We get enough snow, snow as much as there's wool. And the Rosh Kailo, that those words, I, came, I remember I came back. I sat down with my wife. I said to her, the Rosh Kailo gave me such tremendous chizik. Those five words he said to me, and he carried us through, Mamish, to the last day. Tremendous, tremendous dura chizik. My wife didn't want him, she, for years she didn't want anybody to know that she was sick. In the last few years, she had, um, she had gone to the, for a checkup, and the doctor said, there's nothing we can do, just go home. And Chesaf and Rabbeinu Shulaylam, we found a doctor who was willing to treat her. And we were for another eight years. Eight years, a tremendous matonah from the Rabbi Nishlam. During that time, we married off our children. We were to walk our young Israel down to the Chuppah. What a bracha. No time to the Rabbi Nishlam. The Rabbi Nishlam was so good to us. He let us walk our children down to the Chuppah. We were to see so many grandchildren. It's a tremendous bracha. He said we would never complain. And complain, she didn't. She never complained. She never complained. She was always, <coughs> she was happy with her lot, happy to be able to take care of the children, happy to be able to make yontif. This last yontif, I don't know if anybody noticed, but she had trouble holding her head up due to surgery she went through. I was helping her in the kitchen. I said to her, how do, how do you make challah with one hand? How do you braid challah with one hand? She said, watch. She had a certain kayak, nothing stood in her way. Pasuk says, My wife saw a brindle. It was Maitzah's chain. I would meet people in the street and they would tell me, I love your wife. She always has a pleasant smile. She always has a good word to say. That was her. No fanfare, no nothing. Just, just being who she was. Very hot lechas. She was very makbed on sneers. Very much when she would, she would always make sure that clothing was in proper, proper. I know the hour is late and we have to make a flight. I just want to publicly thank her team of doctors, doctors that stretch a period of 32 years, and every one of them was, was were malachim. First and foremost, I have to thank Dr. Adler. Dr. Adler was always there from the first time. Through yesterday, I was on the phone with Dr. Adler yesterday. His chesed, I could never repay. His chesed, the Ben Shalom, would pay. I want to thank Dr. Michael Friedman, Dr. B'zalman Sokol, Ola Shalom, Dr. Barry Wenig, Dr. David Scher, Dr. Guy Petroselli, Dr. Mark Golnick, Dr. Robert Benjamin, Dr. Lawrence Ryan, Dr. Michael Kupferman, Dr. Villaflor, Dr. Shea and Dr. Walsh. Each one of these doctors treated my wife with dignity and they did the best they could to make her life as best as possible. They used the Chachman that the Benjamin granted them and the Benjamin should continue to grant them their Kayach to be able to help people. And we should be Zaycha to be Lamovis Lenetzach Moch Hashem Dim Nalko Ponim. very difficult to be Masput Mommy. I think myself and, and all my siblings, we thought Mommy would be here forever. We were saying in the house, Mommy, Mommy was a fighter, but Mommy wasn't a fighter, Mommy was a warrior. And the truth is that there, there's not much for me to add to, to the Rashi Kaila, to the Dayan and to Tati, except that Mommy really 
mommy really built our house and mommy built, mommy built us and, and together with Tati really, really built, built a beautiful family with Shane Lucifer's. I just want to pick out three nakudas that, 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 mommy, that mommy had and something that everybody could learn from. First of all, there is nothing more important to mommy than, than Tyra. Tati Siddharam, and not just Tati Siddharam, but, but all of our Siddharam. Levi and myself and Menachem and Yo-Yo and Menachem Neustadt. There's nothing that was more important to mommy than, than Tyra. Go, go learn. Find Chavrusas, wherever you need to go. I'll take you, I'll drive you. And mommy was at Snua. There was never, when we went to visit mommy, if it was in, if it was in a hospital or we came to the house, mommy was always dressed exactly the way, exactly the way a Bas Yisrael should be dressed. There was never, there was never any, there, there was never any, any room for error on that. Mommy's tefillah was legendary. There were three tefillahs a day. Sometimes I'd call in the morning on my way to work or on my way to dropping off the, the twins, the kids, and, and mommy wouldn't answer. Mommy would call back a couple minutes later and it was, it was chakras time. Mommy and her well-worn out sitter davening for, for, for her children and for all of Klai Yisrael. Mincha, mommy didn't miss a mincha, and mommy and Tati have their, have their tehillim. Mommy said her tehillim every single day. And one more nakuda was mommy's tremendous, 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 tremendous kibbutz of aim. We grew up around the block from our grandparents, from Bubby and Zadie Glenner, 6736 North Mozart. And Bubby and Zadie's house was an open house for us, but mommy and Tati's house was a complete open house for Bubby and Zadie. We had suitors with Bubby and Zadie. And at the end of Bubby and Zadie's lives, when they got elderly, the, the tremendous, tremendous kibbutz of aim that, that mommy had for, for her parents and, and also for Lahavadu ben Chaim Lachaim, for, for Bubby in the Heights. We go to visit Bubby in the Heights, and mommy was always excited that we were able to be Mekayim kibbutz of aim to go, to go visit Bubby. And mommy had a tremendous, tremendous kibbutz of aim for, for, for her parents. We were, we were fortunate enough, my, my family and myself, we were fortunate enough that we were able to be here for second day's Yontif. We came for Sukkot. We weren't sure if we should come. And we spoke to the Dayan, we spoke to doctors. We ended up coming. And we davened in this beautiful base medrash. And I'm not going to say the word over the way the Rav said it, but the Rav asked the Kasha that we know Kasha Lai Pri Daschem. What's the, what is one extra day? What, is that, what does that do for Klai Yisrael? Stay with the Rabbi what, what, what does that do for Klai Yisrael? You're, you're taking leave anyhow. And I believe the way Rabbi Scheinberg wanted to answer was that it's creating a mindset that there's a, there's a, a, a havashaf, there's a love between the Rabbi Shalom between, and, and Klai Yisrael. Mami, kasha I, 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 I never thought we'd be here. I, I thought you'd come in, you'd be the one to greet Mashiach together with Tati. But you've created a mindset with us of Taira and mitzvahs, and you should be a male tiyaisher for Tati, for your children, and for all of Klai Yisrael. Macha Hashem Lekim Dima Me'al Kol Panim. The eyes will, will, will hope, the hope to see that, that, the, the, that, the, that the choyla will get healed. The soif shaloy yirape. At the, end of the, at the end of the day, there, there won't be a report of Yudavu Hanafashroi Shal Mishpach that the Moisra. Mommy was sick for many years, and we, we were always hoping that 
that she would be she would be fully healed. And we hoped and we hoped. But it was the Mechalis the nine the Nativas Nafesh. We were in Zaycha that that mommy sh- sh- should be completely healed. <clears throat> I was thinking that it was mentioned before, but uh, one of the tremendous milas that mommy had was the Hachzok That uh, even the doctors, they, they had given up hope. I believe one of the major schusim that pulled mommy through for many years, that she she was the instigator for Tati, that he should, he should learn a few hours in the morning in the Kailo. He should partially retire and then fully retire. It was through mommy's, mommy's instigation and mommy's encouragement. And the schus ha that she supported Tati to, to, make, to make that decision was what pulled her through and gave her the extra years. Another thing I want to mention is that we always had Shabbos and Yom Tevim, besides the Mishpacha, we always had guests. There's always, there's always Orchim from all, t- t- all walks of life. The door is always open. And Mommy was the one who cooked. And it, it, there was Bali Tshuva, and it was through those meals. It was through the cooking. And Mommy was an expert cook. And it was through the Ruach of those Sudas that, that brought Kama Kama Bali Tshuva back to Yiddishkeit. I was thinking one time, if you would see sometimes after Mommy was sick, we'd come for Yom Tov, and we'd say, take it easy. No, she never wanted to take it easy. She cooked sometimes for 30 people. Yo-Yo Zufruf, she cooked. I said, people with, people with regular koyachs wouldn't be able to do that. How, how did Mommy have the koyach to do that? So I was thinking that in, in the Zoysa Brocha, Rashi says that, that the Shvotim, that their names were repeated. They were the weak ones. They were the ones that Yosef brought before power. So I, I always had a, 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 a kasha that it's a pella. It says by God, right? Kalovi shachain, the Torah zroya af kodkoid. Rashi says that they were giborim and harugayim were nicker. They had a special way they used to kill their, kill their enemies. So Vos hates that they were chaloshim. So I believe the pshat is that there's people that are bad cholish, but the Eibishter gives a special bracha. It was Moshe Rabbeinu's bracha. There was a special bracha from the Eibishter that there was kolavi shachin that they were able. They had a that the Eibishter gave them a bracha. So I believe that's the pshat with mommy. Mommy was bad sem cholish. She was she was sick for many years, but the Eibishter gave her a bracha. With the, with, with her, as a result of her many midas tivers that she had, and, and, and all the schuyas that she had, and she had a, she had it made her a gibor. Mommy wasn't only a gibor in that sense; she was also a hashkafa gibor. She had crystal clear hashkafas. She knew exactly what she wanted from life, and she kept to those hashkafas, and she couldn't be moved in iota. It was mentioned before, mommy's kaya chatfila. Mommy always davened. It says in Parshish Noyach, by Yisker, Elohim as Noyach, that uh, the shame of Elohim is the Midas Hadin, but it was, ne, it was Nepach, Tarachimim, Bishchus, the Tfilas HaTzadikim. We're living, it was mentioned before, we're living, we're living in a time of tremendous Midas Hadin. And Mommy always davened. And we should learn from that. We should always daven. We could be Mahapach, to Midas Hadin, to Midas Tarachimim. I personally, on behalf of my family, I want to ask Mechila for my honor. Well, we definitely didn't come to visit enough, even though mommy was sick. I want to ask Mechila for Abim about that. Mocha Hashem Elokim, Dima Mel, Kaponim, Amen, Amen. Much has been said about Mami. Much remains to be said about Mami. 
The Rav said that Chava was in Kolchai. There were worlds within her. There were worlds within Mame. Levi, you pointed out that the Shabbos and Yontif Sudas that Mami served people who were unfamiliar with Tyre and Mitzvahs brought them closer to Hashem. No doubt, no doubt those people looked at Mami and Tati, looked at the house they had built, looked at the world they were building, and said, I want that. Mommy, you made a promise and you kept it. Not only did you keep it, but you kept it 100% precisely. If you gave your word that you were going to do something, it wasn't just done, it was done perfectly. Tati sent out a text message yesterday to the six of us that we were going to the hospital. Mommy wasn't feeling well. This was commonplace the last seven, eight years. Mommy wouldn't be feeling well. She was a chalash. She was sick, sick for many years. Mommy always came home. She would go. She would say, matter of fact, I'm coming home. She came home, not only did she come home, she came home, she made Shabbos. She came home, she made Yontif. She came home, she had Archem. Over the last 10 years, we've watched, we've watched as Mami's physical stature slowly diminished. But as her physical stature slowly diminished, it was as if her spirit, her gvura, grew proportionally bigger. Mommy lost her voice a few years ago, but as her voice left her, we were able to hear clearer and clearer how we should behave, how we should conduct ourselves. It was not the volume but it was the dogma, was the example. As her strength slowly left her, her physical strength, her spiritual strength seemed to grow. I remember several years ago, we were in a hospital waiting room. I hate hospital waiting rooms. Me and Tati, mommy was going into some sort of a surgery. And we sat in the waiting room, and Tati said, Mayor, did you bring a Gemara? We opened up a Gemara, neither of us could see straight. The surgery was hours long. But that was Mommy from the operating room telling us, learn Tyra, be Mechazic yourselves. Mommy was a giber, Mommy was a fighter. Tati, I believe you kept Mommy alive these last eight years. Every single doctor's appointment, every single trip, every single treatment, flying across the country to find the next doctor, the one with an option, the one who still had hope. And I think the, one of the lessons of Mommy's life is that it doesn't have to be big and loud, it doesn't have to be spectacular. It just has to be dependable, consistent, honest, virtuous, true, every single day. And in 60 years, you can be an Aim Kalchai. Mommy, we're never going to forget you. 
the light that shone from you was the light of Bubby Rissell that flowed through Bubby and Zadie Glenner straight into 6639. I would like to ask Mechila. For the times I was not Mechabed you, for the times I didn't listen to your advice, I think the six of us agree that if Mommy gave you advice and you followed it, you were pretty much in good shape. If you didn't, well, that's on you. There's just a couple things that I want to say. I find it amazing that so far each one of us had pointed out different things about Mammy. Because there were just really so many. There's so many things. Like Tati said, she never complained. I never heard once her complain about anything. And it's amazing. Her eye and tithe. The good that she saw in everything. Even when I would call about, sometimes I would tell her stories about my children. Maybe made some, no, sometimes they made trouble. And she would always say, oh, he's gonna mature, he'll mature. It was never the way I would look at it. Don't worry, Menachem. He's gonna mature. Such an iron type. Everybody spoke about the Shabbos and Yom Tov Suda, and I want to point out one other thing. There was never a Suda, as far back as I can remember, there was never a Suda that there was not a Dvar Tyra said by the Suda. There had to be a Dvar Taira. There had to be Zemiris by the Suda. Tati always said a Dvar Taira, And we had to say one also. One of us. And the last thing her Chesed. said. These last couple of years. I didn't even know until I came to Chicago. Where she took over. I think Mrs. Friedman who moved to Florida. She had the food distribution. I had no idea how it worked. It was the most complicated system, but it was a system that nobody knew who it was going to. And my, and mommy, she would go down the stairs to the fridge, get the packages. Tati would help her, of course. She was going up and down the stairs, bringing the packages and giving it to the people. Never complained, I and Taif, Chesed, and Tyra. I want to ask Mechila. Was ever a time that I didn't honor you?
This concludes the Levaya here at the shul. The crew will be tomorrow, approximately 4 o'clock, in Eretz Achaim Cemetery in Beit Shemesh. If we can have everybody allow their family to get to their vehicles, they have to make a plane to catch to New York, and then they'll be going on to Israel. So if we can allow the families to get to their cars, and then uh, we'll be able to be Malava, the Aron, outside. <laughs>